In this video, we'll be looking at how daydreaming really plays into limerence and how you might be able to combat it. Hi, my name is Marius. I'm a counselling psychology doctoral student living in London. And on this channel, we talk about psychology, mental health and anything I think you might find interesting or useful. Remember, social media is not a replacement for therapy. So a few things I wanted to say about limerence and people online. I might have to say this in every video or I might just make a separate video addressing it, but I really think it needs to be said. I've seen a lot of people talking about limerence online, really making really grand statements about their understanding of what limerence is or saying limerence is the same as this other well-established disorder. And I think that it's not right in that limerence has not had the scientific backing to be defined in a way that gives the certainty to be able to make statements like that. And so I would say if you are consuming content about limerence, please be wary about who you're listening to and look out for people who really just sound too confident. I'm not an expert in limerence because I don't think it's possible to be an expert in limerence. Yes, I see a lot of people, like a lot of people, who self-define as experiencing limerence, and I believe I have an understanding of what they are going through. But at the same time, you need to have humility and not make statements that might be damaging to people who are going through this by saying things overly confidently just for the sake of getting views on social media and appearing credible, because I think that's a farce. Anyway, run over. So today we're going to be talking about a maladaptive daydreaming and limerence. I actually think inherently to limerence, maladaptive daydreaming is a component of that because Limerence by definition is like defined by this excess. It's about this over identification with this fantasy world of like, what if they say this? What if they accept me after I do this? So there's this distance between you and the limerent object and it's your emotions are very much dependent on whether or not they accept you or not, whether or not they behave in a way that makes you feel good or not. Specifically, if they accept you in the way you need them to accept you. So some people that mixes with having romantic or intimate thoughts about the limerent object, it does not need to be both. And sometimes it's neither, but it tends to like drift into one of those two or both of those arenas. Now, the maladaptive daydreaming, like there's another video on this, but on maladaptive daydreaming specifically, but I think with limerence, one thing that you'll notice if you're going through it is when you're with the person and when you're away from them, your experience of them is very different. So what I mean by that is some of my clients have said, when I'm with them, I don't really have the same neediness, the obsessiveness, almost like things have calmed down. And I think one way of looking at that is from the frame of addiction, because of course, when you're with the substance that you're addicted to, then you feel calm. And then when you're away from it, you feel anxious and you need more of it, so you're coming back. So there is that element too, but I think the thing about the daydreaming is that the daydreaming becomes its own entity. The visual in your mind that you have of them, the idea that you have of them, has grown in the comfort of your own mind. So what your future will be like, what it will be like when you both overcome either your individual challenges together or your individual challenges individually so that you can be together. There's always this story of like maybe and how and what are we gonna overcome and how are we gonna make it work? And also this idea of being completed by them. And this is why I think the title limerent object works really well because the thing that you're limerent towards is the object in your head, like it, an object in the sense of a mental representation of this person, not the actual person. So how does maladaptive daydreaming play into this? By daydreaming about this person, what could be, what has been, uh, what this means, what that means, what should I say, what am I waiting for them to do or say to me in order for me to react, all of that starts to create this mental representation, this limerent object. And so it starts to be a symbol almost for something you feel you need in order to be satisfied, in order to feel accepted, in order to feel whole, in order to feel like you've gone to the next level. A lot of people do say that, is that the limerent object represents something that they need or want they or they're lacking. And if they came together, they would be complete. Now, another thing I'll say is if you pick these individual pieces out you might say, well, that could happen just when you're falling in love to some degree. But remember, limerence is about excess. It's about really taking over your every waking moment. And so all of these elements at one, all turned up to 10 out of 10, is extremely overwhelming. And also the fact that it's not turning into love. It's not going to go anywhere. Or it doesn't seem that that's the case because limerence 
is based on the premise that you and that person are not likely to be together or they're not seeming to give you the attention you need. Because if they do give you the attention you need on a consistent basis, limerence probably cannot be sustained because they are giving you what you're lacking and the limerence runs on the fact that you are not getting what you feel you're lacking. So this approval needs to be chased. You need to go for it. You need to be it without it, basically. That's how the addiction is sustained. Now, what is maladaptive daydreaming like when it comes to limerence? So with limerence, this is, I would say, if you could overcome maladaptive daydreaming in limerence, you might overcome the most difficult part of limerence. This is kind of a new idea for me. I've been exposed to talking about with people. I think it has potential. I just, I don't think it can solve all the problems on its own when it comes to limerence, but it takes up so much time, I think, that if you were able to improve your maladaptive daydreaming even a little bit, that would be a huge relief. So I thought it was worth talking about. So I talked about what maladaptive daydreaming was in another video, but I'll talk about it again here. So the thing is about maladaptive daydreaming, it's something that you can slip into habitually without knowing because you are exposed to some sort of anxious inducing or boredom inducing stimulus in the real world. So you don't like being in the present moment, so you'd rather escape to the fantasies. And limerence becomes the default type of fantasy or maladaptive daydreaming that you go towards. Now, what this means is that you know that you're using this as a self-soothing thing that you do to just get yourself out of the boredom or the pain of the present moment, the anxiety of the present moment, whatever it is for you. So once you know this, you need to start to identify when are you slipping into that? What does that feel like? How do you know you're in the fantasies? When are you fantasizing? Uh, are you conscious when you're fantasizing or do you just realize after the fact, like oh, I've just spent an hour or half an hour sitting on the couch thinking about this or I've been neglecting work, I haven't been doing my schoolwork, whatever it is. You need to find a place to start to know when you're doing it, right? Sometimes it will be deliberate, like you will want to imagine this scenario, so you go into it. So imagining a daydreaming kind of blend, imagining being more deliberate, like I want to fantasize about this specific thing, so I'm gonna do it. Daydreaming being a little bit more like I'm being carried away by the desire to move away from anxiety, so I start to daydream. Like thinking more like a kid staring out of a window in class at school because they're bored, it's that kind of thing. But it doesn't seem like you can separate the two completely. Of course, one could impact the other so once you imagine something it starts to become a daydream once you start daydreaming you realize what you like thinking about so you start to deliberately imagine it etc so knowing when it happens is the first step just noticing when and why it's happening it's because i'm anxious or it's because i'm bored that's when deliverance starts kicking in or the daydreaming starts kicking in now I'm not sure if in limerence you will always need a triggering event, like something in the external world or internally that you can be aware of to push you into that, to want to daydream, but it is worth developing a meta-awareness, like knowing when you're slipping into the fantasizing and not being in the present moment. So I think with limerence, it's kind of like, from what I understand, it's the push or the energy behind the thing that's trying to make you fantasize about this person or over focus on this limerent object doesn't have any specific trigger like they start to have this special aura about them there's something about them that makes them the fixation for you right now and that is just always the case when you're limerent now so for as long as limerent is active they have that status and i think that just the fact that they are on that level makes them the thing that pushes you into maladaptive daydreaming. Whereas in the other domains where maladaptive daydreaming might happen, it might be more about moving away from the present moment. You know, I'm anxious about work, so I start daydreaming. And of course it can get much more pathological, but I'm trying to address the, a little bit more the everyday and limerence at the moment. So for you, limerence might be even worse when work is really stressful, for example, because you have a really stressful project coming up and you're like, I really don't want to do this or I don't like this work. And then suddenly the daydreaming becomes really appealing. So you start doing that and then, then you're avoiding your work, which is a problem. And then you're hating yourself because you're engaging in limerence when you should be doing work and you're struggling. So it's a, it's a bit of a vicious cycle. The thing that's trying to save you from anxiety, ironically is causing more anxiety and you are less able to do the thing that originally made you anxious. So it's really a really damaging habit to have. So. Once you start to develop that meta-awareness of when you're slipping in and out, start to note what it is about the limerent maladaptive daydreaming that is pulling you in. 
You know, it's stuff like, I just want him to hold me. I just want him to have a conversation with me about something interesting and, and talk about philosophy or something that I can't talk to with my friends because they think it's weird or something like that. Start to look at the contents and think about not too much because you'll get carried away in the daydreaming again, but start to say, right, I caught myself daydreaming because I was a little bit anxious or maybe I don't know why, but anyway, I've caught myself doing the daydreaming. I'm gonna start making notes about the themes. What are the themes of these daydreams and what are they doing for me? They're making me feel warm. They're making me feel appreciated, accepted. I feel excited by the idea that these things might happen or just excited by fantasizing about them because there is like an emotional need that's being met whilst you're daydreaming. And make note of those and start to see, well, I'm actually in need of X, Y, and Z. I feel like there is a lack of affection. I want affection from the limerent object and start to reflect on, is that something I feel generally? Is it that I don't feel like I have that anywhere in my life right now, or specifically I need that from a romantic partner, and right now the limerent object is the placeholder for that? Is it just being able to talk about something that only the limerent object appreciates? And so then it becomes a, is that a part of me that wants to be appreciated and to be able to express itself? And is the limerent object really the only person I can do that with? So you see how, this unfulfilled desire which you slip into daydreaming for and have your needs met through the daydreaming can translate into a list of things that you feel you're lacking that you could actually do something about in the real world. So you've identified when you're slipping into the daydream, you started looking at the themes, and once you've got the themes you shouldn't be engaging in this daydreaming anymore. Like as soon as you know you're doing it, you should pull yourself out because you've got all the value out of it because you've made the notes and the themes. What you should do next is to have the behavior to replace, to move you away from daydreaming and either be able to sit with the uncomfortable emotion that makes you want to go into the daydreaming in the first place. For example, what I used earlier, the work project or maybe a school project. If you're anxious about it, it's making you want to either move out of your seat and go to the couch and start daydreaming or just daydreaming in your seat. You've got the meta-awareness, so you've noticed that you're about to start slipping into daydreaming. Make a note of the theme, oh yeah, it's another one about affection. And then you say, okay, now I'm gonna go back to staring that work project right in the eye on, the, on your screen and say, I'm just gonna sit with the anxiety. I'm not gonna try and ask the anxiety to leave. I'm not going to say that I won't be happy or willing to do this work until the anxiety is gone. I'm just gonna sit and stare at that anxiety, like stare at the thing that's causing you anxiety. The thing is it cannot last forever, your anxiety cannot last forever. If you practice instead facing it and being with it for as long as you can, eventually the feeling has to subside because your body cannot be height on that heightened level of anxiety for very long. That's one thing is to be able to sit with it. If that feels too difficult, start more simply with something else that might be soothing like deep breathing or do it having a stretch and moving away, doing something creative, anything that you know will dampen your anxiety a little bit so you can return to the task a little bit less anxious. But the thing is the task is still gonna be there and it's still gonna be anxiety inducing. So you might as well get into the habit of saying, right, this is an uncomfortable feeling, but I'm gonna be sitting with it. You know, almost like you're in company with the anxiety. You're not fighting it. You're not trying to get rid of it. You're not avoiding any task that induces anxiety for you. Instead, you're saying, anxiety has paid me a visit. We're gonna sit here together. I know you're here to deliver a message. So I'm gonna sit here and hear the message. And that's the tension in my neck, my chest, whatever it is. And I'm just gonna sit here and let the feeling know that I'm listening right? If you go into the daydreaming, you're not listening. So the anxiety will just come back. If you run away and do another task, eventually when you come back to the work, it's just going to come back and say, this is still anxiety producing. So you're going to come back and say, I know this is anxiety producing and I hear you and you're right. I am scared of this piece of work, but we can deal with it. So I'm going to sit here with you until you feel like I've heard you anxiety. And once you're ready anxiety, we're going to get on with the task. So this is a lot, I mean, fine, this fits into one video or whatever, but to actually do this is not easy. I'll say that. Well, I, I wouldn't consider it easy, let's put it that way. That is why, as I said earlier, what you see online is not going to be a replacement for therapy, so get the support if you can. I hope these tips are helpful, that's why I make this content and put it free on YouTube, but it's not always going to be enough. So don't think that just because you cannot do this alone that you failed or that you tried the technique, it didn't work, then you know it's your fault. That is not the case. This stuff is, I put it out there because I hope it can be helpful, but I don't speak with absolute certainty about understanding what limerence is and how it works. I mean, I'm studying it as part of my doctorate course, as in I'm gonna be doing my research project on it. But other than that, 
you know, we're not there yet. We cannot use certain words around it. I'm just relaying what I see with the clients that I have who have limerence and what I've learned working with them. So hopefully that was a balanced enough way of saying all this. So look after yourself. See you next time.